Hello everybody, welcome to the Kenny Hack. Um, tonight, uh, gonna be going over the first part of like some uh, black painted tile methods. This is the first one I'm gonna show you. This is gonna be a lot done, pretty much how I do wood images. It's following a lot of the same basic setups. Um, doing a lot of the same things, a lot of the same settings in GIMP, a lot of the same settings in Lightburn, just slightly different speeds and power settings, but here's the image I have. I've already converted this to a grayscale on my phone and cropped it off to a 9 inch by 12 inch image in PixArt. Uh, it's the phone app I use that I showed off in the other uh, how to edit with your phone video um, so I set it to like 900 pixels by 1200 pixels and any multiple of that so I can easily convert it to a 9 by 12 inch which is the size of my tile so you just come up here you go to image and here's something I'll go by while I'm here if you got a colored photo and you want to convert it over to a grayscale, go to mode and click it on grayscale. It didn't change this one because it's already converted to a grayscale, but if it was a color photo, now you've already pre-converted it to a grayscale so you can kind of see how the image is going to look grayed out. But we'll go back here, go to image, I go to scale image and it's already 300 resolution which is pretty high but I'm gonna take it up to 600 and I do that because it gives me more sizing options and light burn I like to try to keep my resolution onto the even inch and I've explained it in other videos if you go to 600 when I when I run this job in light burn I'll go to 300 and that allows me to go to every half inch increment and keep my resolution lined up. It reduces the chances that I'll have any banding issues when I run the burn. So I set it to 600 and I think also when you drag this into light burn having that higher resolution it, I think it might help when, it, when you, I use the newsprint dither I think having that higher resolution set into the image allows the newsprint dither to get a finer dither pattern than if you bring it like the coarser you bring it in the coarser the newsprint is gonna be so if you already set it to that super high resolution and 600 seems to be about as high as I need to go going to I've tried 900 I've tried 1200 it just makes the file size ridiculously big and these little diode lasers have a tough time trying to process an image that size it's just seems like 600 was as high as I need to go and I'm gonna cut it in half to 300 so we're here I'm gonna go to inches and I'm gonna be burning on the y-axis so I want my width to be exactly 9 inches now if this 12 inches had been a little bit off I wouldn't have worried about it that's just gonna overlap the tile and it's not gonna it won't cause any banding issues if that doesn't exactly line up but the width like if I if I had like 300 resolution in here what the native was and I sent it over to light burn and I set light burn to run at 254 resolution when the computer tries to adjust between 254 and 300 it, it can start it'll shift some pixels off and just start deleting some lines and shifting things around to try to get it all to line up and that's when you'll start seeing these bands come across your workspace it'll, it'll be like little dark bands cutting across and that's the computer trying to adjust to make the resolutions line up so make sure whatever you set it at in in GIMP is exactly the same or an exa exactly divisible by that like if I was going to try to burn it say 200 resolution well that would still divide evenly into 600 it would it shouldn't cause any banding issues 
but if you get it off like and it's not exactly an even mount it can cause problems so i just try to keep everything lined up and it it keeps me from having problems so we got the size and the resolution just hit scale it's going to blow it way up um besides star wars i'm also from when i was a really little back in the early 80s i was a big he-man fan i have a huge collection uh have all about all the original characters from the 80s 90s 2000s and that's all in the collection in my basement uh one of the many other things i've managed to collect over the years so doing a little skeletor and all his friends here today um so we'll zoom out everything should be fine right there we're just gonna go to file export and that was the original name i like to add in more information so if i want to come back to this file i know what it's set at so i'm going to say it's set at 600 dpi and that it's a 9 by 12 inch and that way when I, I look at that file i know what settings i already have it saved as so when i want it, if i want to burn it again later it's easy to do so and i already know what settings it's at and it's already saved as a jpeg file so just hit export once again if you haven't seen my channel before i explained this before you want to set this quality to 100 percent like the factory default is at 90 and set it at to 100 so it doesn't try to uh lower the quality of the image by throwing in some extra pixels and uh, you know reducing the image quality so set it at 100 once you set it there one time it'll stay there for all the rest of the time you use it so just go to export and now we'll go to lightburn here we are in lightburn already imported the image Now I'm going to run this one at 7,000 millimeters per minute in 90% power. It's going to be on a 90 degree scan angle because I just that's where I like to run. I think it produces the most narrow laser for these. There are techniques where you, you actually want an out of focus beam and you can run really low DPI. You're kind of tricking it. You have to usually run a lot slower, a lot higher power, but you can really lower down the DPI to increase the speed, and you're, you're kind of burning out of focus. And it kind of can create an image that is very, very decent for as low DPI as you're running. But um, until I get my Z-axis installed and really start playing with that, I'm not going to dive into that. That's another technique to speed up your burn time. And hopefully in the future, I can, I, after I can experiment with it and I got a Z-axis and I can really set my focus and get a consistent offset of out of focus, I'm not going to really try messing with that. But that'll be something down the road. And once again for this one, I'm going with my usual favorite, newsprint. I know a lot of people like some of the other dithers, but I, I'm a kind of a newsprint fan. So we'll go there. Um, go to Shape Properties. Now, my normal settings is I go to 1.35 on wood. Oop, that's 135. That'll be really dark. Um, since I'm going to be, oop, something I almost forgot, sitting here making a video, forget to put in the right settings, wanted to make sure that negative image is clicked, because we're burning on black tile, so we want to actually burn the white space out and leave the black, so you got to make sure you got it inverted. And so back to here now normally um, 
negative 15, 15, 50, 50, and 50 is like a standard setting for me on wood. And that, that kind of makes the black and whites pop a little bit better. But on wood, you're burning on the black scale. You're trying to push, you know, make it burn a little darker. So that's why I raised the gamma up to 1.35. It's making it darker. Burning on tile, you want to make it a little bit lighter. You're, you're burning the white space. So I'm going to drop, you know, as soon as it lets, okay. It's down to 1.25. Um, I don't have perfect settings for this yet. I'm still experimenting myself with these tiles. But let's take it down to like 1.15. Now you'll see, it's hard to see, but the image did, did get considerably lighter. So overall, the laser is going to be burning a little hotter, and everything shifted a little lighter color, so the laser is going to be burning a little bit more. You're kind of adding a little extra power to the laser during the burn just by shifting the gamma from white from the dark side to the white side. It's that's kind of things you got to think about when you're set putting in your settings is like if you're really trying to optimize your speed and power, you can you can help the laser out just by if you shift the image to the darker side or to the lighter side and giving it a little extra power that way without actually changing any of the power settings. You can do it just in the image. But you want to make sure that you don't go so light that everything turns white and you won't you won't get any shading in there. So you just got to be careful on how much you do it. You can zoom way in here and you can see it's still on a gray scale. It's not super dark or all pure white. That's what we're staying away from is pure white and pure black. Um, and we'll see, this might show it a little better. It actually will show a little bit of the dithering pattern. We'll go to the preview. Mm, that did not work. Okay, you can see it a little bit better this way, but if we try zooming in, that's the actual dithering pattern. You can see it's just off and on, that's all it's doing. And we're gonna, it's, this one's gonna take right around two hours for a nine by 12. And that's, that's not bad production for a little diode laser, you know. Whether or not you got a client that's gonna be willing to pay like maybe $50, $60 for a piece like this, that's up to your, your market. And people might wanna pay that, like, probably not for a Skeletor image. But if it's a family portrait, a uh, little something more personalized, it might be something they're willing to pay $60 for. And now you're getting like $20 plus per hour for your laser time and you're making good money with it. You know, not everything, you know, I'm kind of more along the lines, I'd rather sell a few items at good profit margin then have to spend all my time cranking out a bunch of things just to make like one dollar a piece i was like i'm not into mass production i'm into few uh custom order pieces that have decent profit margin that's kind of my business strategy i'm not into mass production this is just a hobby for me that kind of keeps paying for itself so that's i don't need to crank out a thousand pieces to to make money i'm just trying to break even selling a few pieces at good profit margin so everything's kind of set i'm just going to get the tile lined up kind of in like i've showed in other methods i'll get it profiled around i'll hit the shift frame key and make sure the laser draws around the perimeter and has everything framed in good i'm going to get the camera set up to do a time lapse on the burn 
so we can see if like the projected time actually matches what it actually does and just that little over two hour mark and we'll catch it back after the burns over and see how it turns out before I get the burn started I'm gonna show you if you've seen me in the forums this was a piece I posted a few days ago and this one actually turned out to be a practice because you, you can see it was kind of going along pretty good and right in here there's that half inch three quarter inch stretch where all of a sudden I started getting all kinds of bad burn going on and I seen this come up in the forum actually the next day somebody was having that same problem all them lines were showing up across their image and what caused it for me is if you've seen my hood I got a three bay hood and I, I, I got an actually just got a 15 watt or tour that I'm gonna be setting up hopefully this weekend get it all put together so I can do a, a true side by side of which is better the 20 watt or the 15 watt you know for just pure engraving like which one gives a finer laser beam does a better job of just pure engraving is it better to go to a 200 watt 200 15 watt versus a 300 20 watt and i'll try to be doing some tests once i get it all set up and try to give an honest opinion of which one i think does better for pure engraving the 20 watt is obviously going to be a little better if you want to try cutting things but I don't use these little diodes for cutting I don't really buy into it I mean it, it can be done and if you're if you're making good profit selling that stuff I, that's that's good but I, I just don't well, I punish this little laser enough without trying to run it at a hundred percent for long periods of time that's just asking to kind of burn out the laser so I don't mind running high speeds but I try to keep my laser power down I'm running at 90 percent but burning a dither it's not running 90 percent the whole time it's going up and down in power rating so it's not really putting a consistent full load on the laser but anyways back to what caused them lines i was burning along good i thought everything okay it's not it's a little dark but it's not looking too bad and i shut my two extra doors just so I had more draft pulling through the one hood and that extra draft like the air is sucking across my tile in that direction to the fan and I think it was pulling a little bit of the soot because I burn right to left I think it was pulling a little bit of the soot ahead and laying it down in front of the laser to where it was burning over the soot two times and it was causing these little dark stripes to show up because now all of a sudden it's a little bit thicker and it ran that way for like 10-15 minutes and I was like well I wonder if them lines are really showing up or not and so I opened the doors back up and you can see right when I opened the doors back up it quit doing it and went back to burning a nice smooth image so if you're having them black line problems you might have some kind of odd situation where the draft inside your hood or box is causing the problems so try opening your doors or turn shutting your turning if you can turn your fan down lower see if that's what's causing your problem it's not a belt issue it's not a you know any other problem it, it was strictly the airflow across the pattern or across the tile was causing that and I haven't seen that much of that problem with wood I think it's just a burning paint problem so if you're doing canvas or tiles it's something to keep an eye out for so I got this piece all squared up under the laser I'm gonna set up my little timer set up my tablet to time-lapse it and we'll get back here So I got my burn going and I forgot to give you one little deal. These are 9 by 12 tiles from Lowe's and you can see they're not white. 
I couldn't find any 9x12s of the white ceramic tiles, but if you're not trying to do the white on white tile method, or the Norton method where you're trying to fuse it into the white tile, or just trying to leave the white tile as your background behind the black, like I took this, put uh, two heavy coats, and by heavy I mean I sprayed in one direction and then I went quick in another direction, dried that off, and then I put another coat of white on like that, kind of put it on double heavy. Like normally if this is a white tile, two single pass coats would have been enough to white it, give you some white back white layer to burn on. And then the black layer. But since this is a colored tile, I wanted to make sure that that bottom layer was kind of double thick white because I don't want to get down to this brown tile layer. But these were dirt cheap. These were like a buck twenty-five or a buck thirty or something like that a tile. I got a sixteen pack for like twenty dollars. So don't feel like when you go hunting for your tiles that you have to get pure white tiles. It's better to have a uniform pattern, you know, color to them so it's easier to coat it over and it's not going to mess up your image. But just because you can't find white tiles doesn't mean you can't use them for this, pro this kind of work. Because <clears throat> this one here was done on the exact same tile. Ran that one a little too dark. I was trying something different with get settings in GIMP and grayscale, and I'm still working on that method, and hopefully can get you that information out shortly. I'm I'm still trying to make sure my settings are semi decent to put out to use, and that might be the next video. Like I said, this is just a standard newsprint dither, which turns out very reliable and I'm very happy with it. It is a little bit coarser looking. You can see a little bit of the dot patterns in it. So I was trying to figure out a way to trick that by using the grayscale. And like I said, that's might be something I'll get. Like once I'm a little more confident in my settings and how to do it, I'll get to that. But everybody's probably seen this one in the forums this one turned out fantastic um, this wasn't using just the standard newsprint this was adjusting some settings in GIMP kind of processing the image entirely in GIMP bringing it into Lightburn and running it on a grayscale now it's kind of, it's basically doing what the the big GIMP plugin does without needing to buy the plug-in. It's, it's basically, I'll, once I get a little better figured out and I can show you the basic settings, you can save them as like presets where you just click on a couple buttons, click your piece preset, you can scan it way in on the image and you can look at the dithering patterns and see if, you're, if you got it too light or too black, if there's huge areas, like if his whole forehead was like a solid white dithering pattern if it had no texture to it you wouldn't get any of that detail you know and like I said it's still like when you zoom way in you can see some of that texture but you know who's gonna get up four inches away if you're sitting back a couple feet away it looks like a nice smooth image and great quality so that's what we're looking to achieve and like I said if I if I get if I'm confident I got a good starting point with that and I mean this one turned out really good I've tried to get it to a finer uh, dithering pattern to where you see less of that dot matrix showing up but so far going to a finer dot pattern hasn't really necessarily produced better results it's it'll smooth out the lines but it gets harder and harder to get that shading transition it, it just like I said I don't have it mastered yet I I only got so much time to play around and try to find out good settings to start with so it's a work in progress and hopefully down the road here we get to it but that's tonight.
we're just going over just a paint it white paint a layer black and now when I paint these except for the white coat that I try to get on pretty thick when I do the black coat I try to get it in a single layer pass where you, you do a one pass and you, you do about a 50% overlap and like you should be like constantly filling in that leading edge as you're working down like when I first tried these painted tiles I would do one coat horizontally and then I would put another coat on vertically because I was so worried about trying to get an even coat of black but that was doubling the thickness of black which made me have to cut my speed in half and so like the first few ones I tried I was running at about 4,000 millimeters per minute and usually still having to run like 80 percent power to get through that thick layer of black so the trick to doing black tiles and trying to get a decent production time out of it is trying to get a get your method down to where you can paint on that black lead layer nice and even in a single pass as thin as you can get it and the thinner and evener you can do it the faster and lower power settings you can run and if you watch my channel you know I'm all about speed you know it's how do I get maximum production time out of these little diodes and if you really want to make money with these little diodes it's figuring out how to run at the maximum speed you feel comfortable running now for some people that might be 3000 what the manufacturer says to go to for some people they say they've told me that they don't like going over 6000 for me I go up to 9000 but not every method can do that speed anyways this this laser just doesn't have the power to burn through that layer of paint up at the 9000 speed it it'll turn out a really dark image you know it, it can kind of do it but just you'll lose a lot of the the finer shading details so find out what your maximum speed you're capable you feel comfortable running and try to set your power levels to match that speed if you don't want to go over 3000 run all your test patterns at 3000 and keep stepping up your power until you get the quality you want and then that's your number you can run every job at 3000 and maybe just change your power settings whether you're on wood tile um, you know whatever you're trying to do but you know that's how you you got to maximize your profitability time and running your laser is something you have to charge to your clients so find that maximum speed that you're you're comfortable with and you think your machine is running good at and try to figure out what power you can run at to maintain that speed and and increase your productivity you know there's a big difference between churning out a set of coasters in three hours versus putting out a set of coasters in 45 minutes or an hour you know you're only going to be able to charge so much for a set of coasters so if you can cut your laser time by a third down to a third of the time well that's quicker you'll be able to pay for this laser and like for me I'm set up where I could run three lasers at one time all in one hood and if I'm getting if I if I got certain methods that I can get twenty dollars an hour for one laser well if I had three of them running which I don't even know if my computer could handle that processing power I don't know be curious myself but if I had three of them running if I set up a small print farm of 15 watt diodes and I was getting 20 bucks an hour for them well if I'm getting 60 bucks an hour for all three running now you're at a competitive price of what the co2 lasers charge they in general in the forums most of them say they charge a dollar a minute and that's for I mean not the k40 prices them are only three hundred dollars but they don't have they have half the working size 
working bed area of what these diodes do. They can only do about an 8 by 11 so this piece of tile wouldn't even fit in the K40. I'd have to shrunk the image down to fit it in a K40. But it's plenty plenty of room for these these diode frames. These open frames allow for a lot bigger area. But if if I had a single 50 watt laser that cost $1500 for the one of the Chinese versions and only getting a dollar a minute, well if I had three 15 watts set up at $200 a piece and I spent about 200 bucks on my hood and the table, this is a really, really is a very, that's probably about 250 bucks, I think, if I remember right. Still have the whole setup under $1,000. And if I've optimized my time and what projects I'm making to where I'm maximizing the profitability of this machine, I can compete with the CO2 prices just by setting up a mini print farm with cheaper machines so it's a different kind of business model if if you're doing just nothing but a graving cutting speed you're never going to be able to keep up with the CO2s so if you're and price wise I don't I've never tried cutting I don't know the time frame it would take and how much time you're putting on your laser to cut but for pure engraving, there are techniques I'm doing that I'm getting up to like 20 bucks an hour for my little diode. And some things I do, I actually get more than that. Uh, some of my good sellers, um, I'm keeping them to myself, but, you know, I got to try to make a little money somewhere along the line. But it's, it's just a different business plan to look at and what, what fits your capabilities because these, these diodes are far simpler to set up, run, and maintain than the CO2s. The CO2s take a lot more maintenance, a lot more mechanical know-how of mirror alignments, getting your chillers set up, keeping every, you know, making sure it's not too cold, not too hot for the laser. Uh, so that's what steered me away from the CO2s when I first got into the laser work was just the, the diodes seem so much simpler to start off with. They, they just put them together. The hardest part is putting them together, and that takes a half hour. And then with a little basic know-how, I was up and I was burning my first image within an hour of opening the box. So they're very simple to get going. And that's kind of why I started off with the diodes. I want to learn how to run these before I stepped up to a CO2. Anyways, that's enough hearing me jabber. I'll jump back here at the end, and we'll see how this one turns out. Okay, so we got done with the burn. Everything was going really good. 
I was finished up shooting one of my little clips for the video, went to set my phone down, and of course I stepped on the power cord running over to my uh, tablet that was filming, bumped the machine, the machine hit the G sensor and stopped, uh, tried to realign it, as you can see, I was like one pixel width off of realigning it. And it looks like the tile might have shifted down just ever so slightly, maybe. But, you know, I own up to my mistakes. I, I don't worry about trying to produce a perfect tile every time. This is, this is for educational purposes. And when I first ran the burn, once again, it looked like it was burning really light with all the soot that it was laying down. It was tough to tell in the time lapse but it looked really light it, like everything looked really flat it didn't look like it had much good shading to it it all looked like the same color and then when you go and brush them off and that's where you don't get discouraged like when the burn's going if it doesn't look very good like the way the soot, soot might lay down if you don't have a, a air blowing across it to blow the soot off It'll lay a soot layer down and it doesn't look very good, but when you wash it off, and I just wash this under like room temperature water, take a little toothbrush and kind of just scrub away at it and you can get down to like pretty good white layer. I'd say overall I hit the shading just about perfect with this one, uh, except for my one little pixel being off, it'd have been a super good burn. Um, let's put it up next to it. It's quite a bit bigger, but overall the shading was very good. I was very happy with how the shading turned out on this one. So you can achieve great results just with a basic newsprint dither. I mean, you could, if you like Jarvis, if you like one of the other dithers, it'd just be a different speed you'd have to run at. Um, I just like newsprint because it seems to do the best job at getting in all these lighter shades at higher speeds than what the Jarvis and the other dith dithers I've tried. Um, so, like I said, this is hopefully just a good starter point if you're wanting to start to do tiles, want to try to higher speeds, just some te techniques to like how to apply paint thinner so you can run up to a higher production speed. This one took just under or just over two hours um it was like two hours and seven minutes or something like that and if i wanted to bump the machine and had to try to get it restarted and realign that probably cost me about two or three minutes doing that it would have pretty well lined up right with the speed that was on the the projection projected time so Hopefully that kind of helps people out getting started with uh, the black and white uh, on tile. Get a little more information. Um, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Uh, and I'll see everybody on the next video.